Hey everybody, this is the final video in the R Winter series, and today we will be consolidating all the skills we learned in the previous videos to create a visualization of our data from the U.S. Census Bureau regarding employees in STEM and STEM-related occupations. To begin, we'll be covering the different types of visualizations that we can create with R and look into specific graph examples using our data set. Organize here is a type of graphs that we can create based on how many variables we are representing, either one or two, and if those respective variables are continuous or discrete in the representation. We can think of the difference between discrete and continuous variables based on what we use them for in the real world. For example, a discrete variable is a variable whose value is obtained by counting and thus will take on a whole number. So if we want to represent the total number of students in a classroom, the number of times heads is shown when flipping a coin, and the number of marbles in a jar, we are looking at discrete variables. On the other hand, continuous variables are those whose values can be obtained through measurement, such as the average height of students in a classroom, the distance traveled between two locations, and the time it takes to travel that far. These variables can take on any real number, including decimal-based values. The graph function shown here will always be added to the end of a ggplot line of code, as shown through the following template, allowing our program to know what kind of graph we want to make. In today's video, we'll be getting more familiar with the gmcol and gmbar functions to create bar charts for our data. Feel free to play around with the other graph types after watching today's video. To begin, we're going to install our tidyverse toolkit that we had introduced in last week's video. Then we're going to call on our library for dplyr and ggplot. We'll be using the first package to help us filter through and organize our data, while the second will allow us to visualize this information. Next, we're going to upload our cleaned process data onto our file tabs, if we haven't already. Now we're going to open the CSV file and save it to our data frame stemjobsdf. From here, we're going to organize our data in two ways. First, we want to see the total amount of male employees that are in every category of STEM and STEM-related jobs. To do so, we're going to use the group by function that we learned about in the previous video and group our data by the occupational category, assigning this result to a new variable called male employees. From here, we're going to summarize this data so that we have the sum of all the men that are employed in each category and create a new column called male total to save this information in. After running this block of code, if we call in the male employees variable, see that this is how our data is currently formatted. Now we're going to repeat this information again, only that this time, instead of summarize for male employees, we'll be finding the total amount of female employees in each occupational category. With our organized data, we can now go ahead and graph this information using ggplot. To do so, we have to specify within the ggplot function what data set we are looking at. We are first going to make a graph to look at the male employees in each occupation. Now we assign what is going to be graphed on the x and y axis using the aesthetics component. x is assigned to categories so that on the x axis we have the names of the occupational categories that we are looking at. In the y axis we assign the male total values that we had calculated through the previous summarize function. This will give the frequency of male employees in each category. Now that we defined what our axes are, we have to define how this graph is going to be made. Since we want a bar graph, we'll be using the gmcol function. Note that for the purposes of our project, we can also use gmbar instead of gmcol, since we are essentially looking at only one variable, the frequency of the occupation, but we're able to separate them in our code based on frequency data and their respective occupation description. At the end of this line of code, we're also going to add the chord flip function, as this allows our x and y axis to be flipped in our final graph presentation. This is an important line of code to have, since our category descriptions are long, and otherwise it'd be hard to read our graph. If you didn't want to flip the axes to see the category descriptions, you can also use the theme function and the axes text x component like so, to switch the angle of the text to 90 degrees, so the text is clearly seen on the usual x axis. We can repeat the same process for our female employees' data and see how the two graphs compare to each other. Note that for each graph definition, we are assigning it back to a variable so that we save our graphs and are able to call on it again for future reference without having to make a new graph outputted to the console every time. From here, it's clear that we can see the apparent differences in employment between males and females in different STEM and STEM-related occupations. But let's say that we wanted that comparison of data to be clearer in one graph instead of two separate ones. We can create a stacked bar graph that will show the total amount of employees in each occupation and demonstrate the distinction between male and female employees in each. To do so, we have to create a new data frame that includes information from both the female employee and male employee variables. Remembering our format for creating data frames and vectors, we'll use data.frame and name the different columns that we want in our new data frame, assigning values along the way through new vectors. 
Note that a shortcut for repeating information in our data frame is the rep function that allows us to repeat the information we define a certain amount of times and with a certain frequency. For example, our category function repeats the categories twice for each sex, while the sex column is repeated nine times each when assigned to the repeats of the occupations. Then I just copied over the respective total values listed in our female and male employee variables. From here, we can create our ggplot like how we did before, this time setting the y variable to total as that is the new frequency for each occupation, and then adding in a new component called fill that is set equal to sex. This fills in the respective bars of each category based on the amount of male and female employees that are in each occupational group. We continue with the GM coal and cord flip specifications, and now when we print the graph, we see more clearly the distribution of male and female employees in the different STEM and STEM-related occupations, as well as the total amount of people that are employed in each type of field. It's apparent that the healthcare industry has the most amount of people employed, with female employees making a significantly larger portion of the occupation. Computer and engineering occupations follow respectively, but in these occupations, male employees outnumber female. However, it's hard to tell for the less populated occupation categories how much of a difference there is between male and female employees. To fix this, we can change our graph in two different ways. First, we can create our graph to be a grouped graph instead of a stacked one, having the number of female and male employees be next to one another. To do so, all we have to do is add the line position equals position dodge inside the GM call function. This specifies to the program that we want our bar graph to be grouped instead of stacked. Now we can see that for the social sciences, there are more females than males employed. However, fields like architecture, mathematical sciences, and physical sciences tend to have significantly more males than females, with technicians also having slightly more males than females. But since the y-axis can go as far as 10 to the power of 6, the exact differences between these numbers is still not as clear. Therefore, we can define our position parameter to equal fill instead. This will make the heights of each occupation to be the same, so that we're looking at the overall frequency of these occupations instead of their relative frequency provided by their individual total values. After making our graphs, we can add different types of aesthetic values to help make our graphs more visually appealing and or have clearer descriptions. For example, if we want to have a custom graph color for our visualizations that allow us to have a thematic similarity between different types of graphs that we create, we can use the scale fill brewer function and specify what palette we want with the different types of palettes being shown here. Likewise, we can specify a graph theme that changes the background and axis form depending on what kind of theme you want to have. Additionally, if we want specific graph titles that allow us to explain more what is being shown through our graph, we can use the GG title, XLab, and YLab specifications to do so. I hope this video helps you to learn more about ggplot and the types of graphing visualizations we can use and create in our programming.